Hello, uh, welcome back to the course on other signal processing for music applications. We are in the last week of the course and we are just touching some small topics to basically wrap up the course and uh, give you uh, some relevant complementary uh, topics that uh, I believe you should be interested in. So for example, in this lecture, I want to just review a few things of uh, every week and highlight uh, some of the core topics that uh, we have been uh, going over so that uh, you can see kind of uh, our perspective of the things that are relevant. So we will uh, basically go through every week. Uh, we'll start by just uh, describing the general uh, framework of the course uh, and uh, what uh, we consider as uh, the basic ideas uh, that uh, we cover. And then we'll go through the different topics, like the first one on the, the sound spectra, and basically on the DFT and the STFT. Then uh, we will um, uh, talk about the sinusoids and harmonics. Then we'll go over through the residual and stochastic uh, components and the idea of modeling uh, uh, sound with uh, sinusoidal plus residual components. And then we'll talk about the two uh, applications that uh, we use. Uh, one was uh, the idea of transforming sounds. And uh, the other, the one of last week, uh, was about describing sounds and music uh, in uh, collections. And then uh, the previous lecture, we just did a short attempt at uh, looking beyond uh, this uh, course and seeing what other topics could uh, be continuations of, of this. So let's go through everything. And first, uh, the idea is the, the spectrogram. So this is a view of a spectrogram of uh, this uh, piano sound that we have seen in the class. And this captures a little bit the essence of what we are doing. We are basically uh, starting from this spectral representation of a sound. Uh, the idea is a sound, uh, the, the, the basic representation is the time domain waveform. But uh, for us, uh, that's really not that useful. So what, uh, what we are doing first is to go to the frequency domain, to the spectrum. And this has some uh, perceptual motivation uh, in the sense that our uh, um, hearing process does uh, some of that. Uh, basically, we uh, are doing some of these analyses ourselves in order then to understand better what a sound or a piece of music is. So there is some uh, perceptual motivation behind the idea that the frequency domain, the spectrum of a sound, is a, a very basic uh, view of a sound after which we can do a lot of things from. And the kinds of things we have been doing uh, are, can be captured with this uh, diagram. So we have been starting from the, the input signal, x of n. And uh, all the analyses we have done have uh, done quite a bit of this. So basically the idea is to start with the fast Fourier transform, the FFT, then obtain the peaks uh, from the spectrum. Out of that, we can obtain the partials, uh, the harmonics of a sound. And uh, these can be subtracted from the basically the original signal and obtain this residual. Okay, so this is the basic analysis that a lot of the things we have been doing uh, go through. And out of that, we can obtain interesting features. So we can do feature analysis to obtain the fundamental frequency. We can obtain uh, some ways of describing uh, some sounds. But we can also transform these features. We can tra transform the sinusoid. We can transform this residual and uh, obtain a new sound, a synthesized sound, that uh, uh, can be a modified version of the uh, input sound. Or if we don't make any transformations, ideally, it should be uh, very similar to the input sound. So this is uh, kind of the basic framework within which uh, we have elaborated all uh, our analysis, uh, description, and synthesis uh, techniques. So let's now go through uh, some of these individual uh, aspects of all this uh, framework. The first one uh, was the idea of uh, spectrum of a sound. 
And the idea that we can start from a sound and obtain a spectrum. And we had two versions. We had the single frame version, basically, and that's what we call the discrete Fourier transform, in which we just analyze a fragment of a sound, or a sound that is very short, and obtain a single spectrum. And then we went over the time-varying version of that, which is the short time Fourier transform. So that instead of having a single spectrum, we have a sequence of spectra, and that's the x uh, sub l of k, which is uh, this idea of time-varying frequency representation of a sound. And that was, we could consider that as the first model that was useful for us. The first analysis synthesis model that uh, could capture any sound. In fact, this was an identity system, therefore we could analyze and synthesize any sound. And then on top of that, we built this idea of sinusoidal or uh, harmonic models. The idea that we could capture uh, parts of the sound that have a sinusoidal nature. Okay? Strictly speaking, the DFT is also a sinusoidal model, but this sinusoidal model is a little bit different. These are uh, the idea of stable sinusoids, of sinusoids within a sound that have some stability, some coherence, and that are really representing something meaningful uh, from the, the acoustics of the, the sound. And that was the sinusoidal model. And the harmonic model was a step uh, beyond that in the sense of there is quite a large family of sounds that uh, these sinusoids have a harmonic relationship. So the harmonic sounds have a series of harmonics, but they are multiples of a fundamental frequency. So if we can uh, use that restriction, so if we have uh, sounds that have that type of behavior, then the analysis uh, can be done in a more restricted way, and we can obtain a much more powerful representation. The idea of this harmonic model allows us to represent a sound in a very compact way, and at the same time have a lot of potential for describing and transforming the sound. Then we saw that uh, these uh, sinusoidal, these uh, harmonic uh, components of sounds, uh, do not capture everything in a the sound. There is a part of the sound that is left out. And this is this residual or, or stochastic components. So when we have analyzed the sinusoids or the harmonics of a sound, we can actually subtract them from the original sound and obtain residual that is what is left. And it sometimes is quite relevant. Sometimes that's a very uh, small part of the sound that can be discarded, so it's, it's not perceptually relevant. But in many cases, this is an important part of the sound that needs to be preserved, needs to be captured. And we can just capture it as it is, and that will be the residual component, or we can model it with a stochastic model, with the idea of filtered white noise. So in the bottom uh, representation, the residual is approximated with this idea of a time-varying filter uh, through which we put a white noise. So we have this uh, complete model of sinusoidal plus stochastic components, and that captures the uh, many sounds. Not all the sounds are properly modeled this way, but quite a large family of sounds, uh, either sinusoidal plus stochastic or harmonic plus stochastic, can be used to model uh, many sounds, and that then yields a lot of potential for capturing the essence of the sound or being able to modify that sound. And that what brought us to the idea of transforming sounds. When we have these type of representations, we have these uh, harmonics or these uh, sinusoids, and we have the frequencies, the amplitudes, and the phases, and they can be processed, they can be manipulated quite a lot. And we can change quite a bit uh, the, their values. And the stochastic component too, and uh, things like time stretching or uh, shifting the, the frequencies or doing arbitrary changes. In fact, in the class we went over some common transformations but uh, there are many more that we could do uh, that uh, go beyond uh, what we cover in class. So 
So apart from the transformation of sounds, we also talked about describing sounds. And uh, this is a huge field. Uh, in fact, we only talked about uh, a small part of it. The concept of describing sounds uh, cover uh, a wide variety of, uh, of abstractions. And we mentioned we use this uh, diagram to show the different levels of abstraction or of description of sounds. We stayed very much in the low levels of descriptions, the physical, sensorial, and some perceptual type uh, uh, descriptors uh, that are useful to uh, describe uh, sounds and, and music signals. But uh, this is a, a very interesting area of application of this spectral analysis uh, towards this uh, a much broader field of describing uh, sounds and music that are not just uh, a collection of frames, but there is uh, complete pieces of music and complete music collections and the type of problems are quite different from uh, what uh, we talked before. But anyway, so that was a, a good introduction to describing uh, sounds and music using the techniques uh, we had been talking the previous weeks. And then finally, uh, in the last lecture, we just uh, kind of open up a door of saying, okay, and what's beyond that? And beyond that, there is a lot. Uh, there is a lot uh, within the audio signal processing field. So audio signal processing is much more than what we have been looking at. and. Uh, you can explore many other methodologies to analyze, describe, and transform sounds. And even more than that, sounds and music, which is our target uh, kind of uh, uh, information that we are trying to understand, uh, is much more than audio. So we just hinted at the idea that we can use many other sources of information to analyze, uh, describe, uh, sounds and music, and uh, that's a, a very new area that is being uh, explored uh, in the last few years, and that opens up uh, very interesting new application and uh, development areas. And uh, that's all. Uh, so, well, the slides are in uh, the SMS tools, and uh, hopefully that was uh, just a very uh, S a very brief summary of some highlights of, uh, of the lectures uh, that we went through the course and uh, maybe that uh, help you understand uh, some of this overall view of the course and how we see the, the, the coherent uh, of uh, the, all the topics that uh, we covered. So thank you very much and I will see you uh, in the next lecture. Bye-bye.